All right, here's the don't want to do job here. <laughs> when you're trying to put your transmission in and you noticed it's all kinds of schwankled and you're trying to draw it in, one thing to do, put your, put your hand in here and try to spin the torque converter. Right now, my finger's on the torque converter right there. I'm trying to spin it. If the torque converter won't turn, it's jammed up. And that's probably because the torque converter might have popped out a little bit. Like if the torque converter falls a little bit towards the engine, it's no longer splined into the oil pump. And then the flex plate jams the torque converter and starts to try to draw it in. And then you're noticing this crack won't close up. And then you try to like use a bolt to draw it up and then you make a new crack that wasn't supposed to be there. And so this one's gotta come back down. We're gonna reset the torque converter. I'll show you how to do that so you don't break stuff on the job. All right, so here's what I think we got on that one. I just popped this pump apart here. So basically the torque converter is gonna slide in here. And there's a few things that happen. One, there's an input shaft. So the input shaft spines the turbine and the torque converter. I'll show you that. Then there's the stator support shaft. And that's the stator slides on that. Then deep down in there, there's little drive keys for the pump. So it's hard to see them, so I'm gonna take this off. Okay, there's the driven gear of the pump and the crescent, and here's the drive gear. If you don't have it seated right, that pump, that torque converter will not engage these teeth very well. It'll kind of push up against them, and you'll snap the teeth off, especially if you start it. So because their torque converter fell out a little bit, right now the torque converter ears are pushing really hard on these teeth and they're trying to draw it in with bolts and they're gonna break the teeth if they didn't already. If you break these teeth, you need a new drive gear, which means you really need a new pump, which means your transmission's coming apart, your pump is coming out, and you're gonna end up basically replacing the pump. Let me show you how those engage. All right, so we got this transmission back down and here's what we're gonna do. Um, one, we're quite sure that this had fallen out. Now, if we really wanted to know for sure, we could lay a straight edge across this and we could measure the torque converter depth to spec. We don't really know what the spec is, so I'm gonna kind of more show you how to do it by feel. So this torque converter we know at, at least kind of had come out. So I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna flip it real quick so it doesn't leak a ton of fluid. At this point, I can kind of inspect the drive teeth. Looks like the torque converter's okay. I'm looking in here, I'll set it down for a second. It looks like those teeth are okay, but if we had kept going, we were gonna have a big problem. So I'm gonna try to get the angle right. It's very tough to see, but I can see a tooth right there. And I can see a tooth right there, but they are very tough to see. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like off the car. So here's gonna be the clicks. I'm gonna show you the clicks. First click is gonna be the input shaft engaging the turbine down in here. Next click is gonna be the stator engaging the stator support shaft. The third and final click is gonna be the ears on the torque converter engaging the drive gear in the oil pump. So here we go, you ready? Whip it up. Get it started and hold it. All right, so that was my first click. I'm gonna spin. That was probably the second, but I'm not there yet. Now, I'm not entirely happy with that, so I think I'm good, but I'm gonna redo it anyway. So, that was the first. That was actually, I think, the first and the second. First. One. Second, third. Now, if you're scared, just keep on trying. Keep kind of picking up, wiggling, turning. I also like to kind of feel it should be pretty tight to the back of the bell housing. But I'm convinced that was three. Now, if we were to lay a straight edge, we notice it's sitting slightly deeper because it engaged the pump all the way. And so we gotta be real careful with that. But I'm confident on this one. If I was, you know, if you were brand new, you'd keep go ahead and keep trying to push and wiggle and feel until you're really confident. Ideally, if we can, 
when we pull it down, we want to measure it and we want to make sure it's just as deep. But see this one, you know, this one kind of fell its way out and that happens all the time. That's the purpose of the video. So go ahead and pause that. I'm going to go get it. All right, so here's the big parts table. So first thing, what I was trying to explain is the input shaft is sticking out of the transaxle. And so that's the first thing that's going to engage and that's going deep inside of the torque converter and it's engaging the turbine. This red part right here is the stator. So for a moment, let's just take the stator out of the, out of the mix here and then deep inside in the turbine, which is blue right here, you can see the turbine you know, will spin. We're trying to engage the input shaft of the transaxle right into that turbine. When we get that one to engage, that's our first click. Then we're gonna keep spinning it, and our next click is actually gonna be this stator, and so that um, stator is gonna go on the stator support shaft. So kind of what you have to picture is there's the pump, and the pump has the input shaft going through it. So this one, we left a planetary gear set for a carrier for show, but that input shaft is going straight through the center, right? So what we need to first engage is the input shaft. Then the next one, that stator support shaft right here, can't turn, it's, it's just a part of the pump housing. That's the next thing to engage. So what that looks like, if our stator was in there, it's, it hangs out right inside the torque converter. This stator support shaft with the transaxle is gonna come up and we're gonna spline that in there. We're gonna hear that go, right? What that looks like, down here is this. Boom, so that would be those splines. And, and most people get those two. Where it can go wrong, and Toyota seem to be a little bit more prone than other manufacturers, is the actual pump. And so what I've brought over is our drive gear. And that drive gear uh, basically has to be splined to the ears of the torque converter. So here is the torque converter housing. Let me bring it over to this bench here. So there's our torque converter housing. The very last connection that can be hard to make sometime, right? Because you're spinning the torque converter and then boom, whenever you can, we got to get that drive pump splined. What that group had out there, they had it more like this right here. And obviously if you see how that is, the torque converter won't go in full depth until we get it spun and spun and then slid, you know, so you figure the torque converter is trying to go in. If it's not spline, that torque converter is going to hang out. It's going to bump into the flex plate. And if you try to draw it up with the bolts, like I said, you'll shear the teeth off. We have a couple sets of sheared teeth off from pumps being damaged, so it can happen. So it's kind of like the pitfalls of the automatic transmission or transaxle torque converter oil pump problems.